James Detroit, Current Events, Historical Perspective. It is still April 3rd, 2020. The COVID-19 shut-in is underway. And uh, I want to thank you for viewing. If you're a subscriber or if you're viewing this for the first time, share it with somebody if you like it. Uh, the CARE Act, 883 pages. Now, this is a series of videos that I'm doing today. This one happens to be about money. And the CARE Act, 883 pages of legislation. And it sounds so nice the way they label these legislative acts that really, like in this case, it gives permission to nationalize the system. What does that mean exactly? What system are we talking about? You know, uh, never let a crisis go to waste to further your agenda. That's what the governing body and that the elite that's trying to take control of all of us. And I sound conspiratorial when I say these things, but it's really happening. And I want to, I want to, I want to continuously point these things out. And so Congress did not act from 2003 to 2015. There were no less than 10 commissioned reports about how there is a lack of preparedness by this nation. And yet Congress continued to send money overseas, spend it on other things. And under the leadership of the last administration, not only was our military depleted, so was our health system and our supplies our supply chains, our manufacturing, all these things have been sent overseas. And so uh, I'm, I'm critical of Trump in many ways, but as a private citizen, as a candidate, and an, as president, there were a few things that were not empty campaign promises. And uh, bringing home manufacturing was one of the things that he talked about. So that's for another podcast altogether, uh, being critical and complimentary of this administration. But right now, let's talk about money. And these things that, that, these actions that Congress never took, so being responsible with the funds that we sent to Washington, spending it on other things instead of preparing for the next pandemic, because pandemics are a ongoing occurrence to humanity. This is not something new. This didn't just pop up. These things happen on a regular basis. And all of these sicknesses that come out, uh, the United States is better than anybody else at getting in front of it and conquering it, winning a war. So I just think that we're taking extreme unprecedented measures and the cure is going to be worse than the disease. Um, but this, this ends up being about money. These 10 reports that were, that were published saying we were not ready. And Fauci, Fauci has been working with under six president with six presidents. And he seems like a really nice guy and a really smart guy. But uh, how was he not yelling from rooftops saying, we need more, we need more, we need more? It, it, it surprises me how much attention has been given to these people at this time to try to justify the actions that they're taking. Uh, so let's look at money. Money's been around for most of recorded history. And through it all, gold and silver has been the best form of currency. Now, there's many nations that held the title of the number one global currency, the reserve currency for the for the world. Uh, through throughout the years, the the uh, Persian Empire, Greek Empire, Roman Empire, um, uh, Spain, Portugal, England, all of these countries' currency at one time or another held that position. And I believe it was in 1944, Brenton Woods, New Hampshire, you have a meeting of, again, global elites, decision makers, and it was decided that the United States dollar was going to become the world reserve currency. And as an example, all oil that would be traded would have to be traded in U.S. dollars. So this puts the United States of America in a very powerful position. And it really does help lead 
us into being the superpower, the most powerful country on the planet. And so uh, as I'm, I'm starting to study this, uh, and, and again, I'm just reading, I'm just reading, it's, it's available. The Euro dollar, the BRICS nations, that acronym stands for countries that, you know, as they go and they meet at Davos and G20 and G8, it's all of these elite. So for, for somebody that says um, it's a conspiracy theory that I'm, I'm suggesting, we see these regular meetings about with these elite groups that that it's it's publicized and we think oh look at that Davos or wherever these G20 G8 whatever G whatever meetings are and they're making decisions the central banks the IMF they're printing money and Russia and China and other central banks are buying gold at record paces so they all deny that a decentralized ledger of the blockchain technology and Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies that that this is you can't it'll it'll never work. This is not the future. And yet publicly they say this, but internally they're working on how they can profit from it. And this has been going on for a long time. Now, I have been on record before saying, uh, and this was based on uh, Dr. Bruce Rubenstein a professor of mine at the University of Michigan, Flint, talking about the Wizard of Oz and how strongly there are some underlying suggestions. It was a children's book, yes, but there are a lot of underlying suggestions about what type of currency should America, at the, at the end of the eight, um, uh, 19th century, at the end of the 1800s, what type of currency should be used going forward? And it's even suggested that the... Um, uh, the characters that were used happen to have a lot of similarities to people from Wall Street back in the day. All of this has been denied, but again, there are a lot of things that are very suggestive. And before when I said, hey, it's only science fiction today, The Wizard of Oz is only science fiction today when it was written. But L. Frank Baum, the author of that, also had many other writings, and, and he gave us suggestions at the time, which was only science fiction today, of laptop computers, cell phones, augmented reality, and television, prior to any of those things even being invented. So uh, maybe, maybe in The Wizard of Oz, there are some underlying suggestions about currency, and I do not believe that it's a stretch because if you look at these other things that he was talking about and writing about that end up becoming reality. At the end of all of this, gold and silver for all known human existence. Currencies have been used and gold and silver have been used in the form of currency better than anything. And now because of technology, we have the blockchain technology, a decentralized ledger that can allow us to have a currency basis. And so the cryptocurrencies, they've been around now for more than a decade, and they're going to, regardless of what mainstream media and all of the elite tell you, there, there is a place for them. So uh, most everything that we see happening, it ends up being about the money. And I think it's really important to transition our minds into understanding what in uh, what an ex what is an appropriate exchange for goods and services, and what we're going to be holding on to, because no matter what, gold and silver have never been worth zero, and in Zimbabwe and in Venezuela we see things. Not able to purchase what it used to yesterday. Listen, we're going to have some more on the, the uh, separation of church and state, which maybe should be the separation of corpor corporations and state. And talking about how an intended aspect to preserve the rights and liberties of the citizenry ended up being used against us. And now how maybe we should look at 
that original document and utilize it to help us get back to a free a free society of our restore some of our liberties and act in the best interest of the citizenry. I look forward to the next time we get a chance to talk. Share this with somebody if you enjoyed it. I appreciate you being a subscriber and I appreciate you viewing this. This is James Detroit. I'm out.